Morning, Sharon. How are you doing today? Hey, Rick. I'm good, dear. What's Excellent. up? Oh, not too much. Uh, I was just uh, reading the email that you sent out about uh, if you're considering moving to a rural area with interest. Uh, I know with uh, doing mortgages, it can definitely be more complicated uh, to, well, a lot of lenders simply aren't interested in lending in rural areas, for example. So first you have to find the right lender and so forth. Um, but there's also many other issues that you wouldn't normally deal with if you're looking at a city property. Um, what would you, uh, if, if you had a client that really wanted to move to a rural area, what would be some of the things that you would tell them to consider uh, before uh, taking that leap? Okay, that's a great question. And uh, you know what, I'd love to break this in two parts if we can. I want to answer your question, but then I want us to come back and answer it from the lender's point of view. Oh, okay, if, sure. If there's Because I, I have questions on that as well. Um, Rick, I have lived in uh, rural areas and I've mm -hmm. lived right in the city. And uh, I live in the city now and I own rural properties too, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but there's things that we don't think about. Like One of the things that COVID did was that it really made people in apartments and condos, people without backyards go, I can't live like this. I can appreciate that. I was uh, in a downtown condo uh, when <laughs> it, it was, yes, getting out was good. Yeah, so so they, they, they were listing their properties and they were buying out in the country somewhere. Mm -hmm. Some found that it wasn't as easy to do as they thought. Um, there's a lot of things about um, a rural property that we just have to think about. One is not for everybody because, you know, like it's, it's just that it just takes you further out away from everything you know. Um, it is excellent in terms of giving you more space, less purchase price for the house and things like that. But there's a couple of things that are, I suppose some would consider them liabilities in terms of the cost of living, in terms of financing perspective and insurance perspective. So in a city, for example, um, we have an infrastructure. We have, um, you know, supposedly great plumbing, great sewer systems, great roads. We have great transits. We've got uh, communities that are intentionally planned. So we know where the water runoffs are. We know the soil's been tested for environmental things. Um, so all of that stuff is actually a really big one. So what we don't realize moving out to the country mm -hmm. is that and it's something that I learned when I had bought my first property out there was that, you know, it is not, there are no assessments done in terms of um, the quality of the soil, but also the likelihood of things like flooding. Um, so there are houses that are built out there, uh, you know, in, and, and they're in basically, some of them are like in swamps and, you know, uh, that today, I mean, Can't imagine consider that. It was a nice level lot, but knowing the things we know today, the house was built 50 years ago, the things we've learned even the last 10 years in environmental assessments and, and where to build a house and where not to build a house. And then depending on where that house is, will you get fire insurance? How close is their fire hydrant? Will you get, if you can't get fire insurance, you know, you're not going to get house insurance, you're not going to get a mortgage. If you can't get house insurance because you can't, don't have the fire insurance, you don't have any protection. You know, and then there comes the mortgaging side, which I want you to touch. So that is a big one that I, I really want you to get into because then that brings you that environmental issues bring you to the cost of of home insur of insurances, the mortgages, uh, what lenders are looking at. Um, in addition to that, there is like um, you got to remember the cost of your auto insurance because of how much mileage you're putting on if you're not working from home. Um, you know, if you're working from home, that's not so much of a, a question. Um, you know, we think, you know, the other thing that we don't really look at is the cost of, um, for example, in the city, we try and keep more green space, but, you know, we also have things like more squirrels in the attics chewing up wires. We have, we'll have things like little rodents, um, you know, causing damage in our attics or to our wiring and we get insurance and they take care of that. Remember that if depending where rural is for you and how country country is for where you buy. I'm not talking just north of Newmarket here. No, 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 no. So, but you could even go like, I mean, you can go half an hour, 40 minutes outside of north of north of the city, 20 mm -hmm. minutes north of the city, you know, east of the city. Sure. You don't have to go that far. 